Hi, welcome. What I want to talk about right now is actually uh, discharging of the stored charge of capacitors. So I want to think about when we have a capacitor connected into an alternating current circuit, right? So it's constantly storing and discharging and storing and discharging and storing and discharging inside of that electrostatic field. Now what happens if we have a capacitor in any type of circuit, motor circuit, transformer circuit, just energized capacitor for no reason whatsoever? It's storing, discharging. As soon as we open that circuit, as soon as we open the disconnect, now that capacitor has a stored charge. Now, obviously not safe to be running around with a capacitor with a stored charge because somebody could get hurt. So what we do is code requires us to have a means to drain that stored charge. Uh, so for this, we're dealing with 26, 2, 2, 2. Now 26222 tells us how to deal with draining the stored charge of a capacitor. Right, so sub rule one tells us it shall have a means to discharge that charge. Uh, sub rule two tells us that if your capacitor is 750 volts or less, you need to discharge within a minute. If you're over 750 volts, you have five minutes. Uh, sub rule three tells us that our discharge path has to be permanently connected or be automatic switching. So it'll automatically come on when the power turns off or something like that. Sub rule four basically reiterates that and says it cannot be by manual operation. You can't just pay somebody to sit there with a switch and discharge that capacitor. Sub rule five tells us if it's in a motor or transformer or similar circuit and the motor or transformer is good enough, that can count as our discharging path. What I want to spend a little bit of time on right now is actually sizing what we would call a discharge resistor. So sizing this discharge resistor would be, uh, it would be sized for putting it into, this is our capacitor, we would put it in parallel with the cap, right? And we might have it switched or something by putting in a set of contacts or something like that some way to enter, or to put that discharge resistor into the circuit so the capacitor can discharge, right? Now we talked a little bit, if we are 750 volts or less, we would have one minute. If we are over 750 volts, we have five minutes in order to discharge that capacitor. So that would look a little bit something like this. When we de-energize a capacitor from a circuit, it's now storing a charge. But when it releases that charge, it releases in a DC uh, format, right? It's gonna be direct current, right? Because it stores all the electrons on one plate, not on the other. So we have to think back about how uh, current operates in a, or voltage, sorry, the charge in a DC circuit. So what we see is our voltage, as soon as we discharge, our voltage kind of goes like that. So this being our voltage, volts, and this being our time. Now, uh, what we see happening is along the way, there's five equal time constants. And we have a formula in order to calculate those equal time constants of discharge. That formula is T equals R times C. In this case, we know the time and we know the capacitance because we know what our capacitor is. What we're trying to calculate is the resistance. So R would equal uh, T divided by C. I want to show you an example of this. So we, we, we need to know the resistance. This time is the time of one time constant. So if I'm talking about one time constant, and I have, let's say I have a 200 volt uh, capacitor, and it is 200 microfarads. So I've got this connected. I know I have one minute to go from maximum voltage to zero. Well, one minute, if I have five time constants, that would mean each time constant would be 12 seconds. So if all those are 12 seconds, 12 seconds, 12 seconds, I can calculate that. So I can go resistance, my R would equal 
my 12 seconds divided by my 0 0.0002 farads, right? My 200 microfarads. That's going to tell me in this case, I would require a 60 kilo ohm resistor. So 60 kilo ohms would be the size of the resistor I would require for this 200 microfarad capacitor at 200 volts. Now how this would change, right? So if I'm talking 750 volts or less and it's one minute, we say that's 12 seconds per time constant. If I was over 750 volts and I had five minutes in order to discharge, now that would be 60 seconds per time constant, 60 seconds. So I would just change this formula and now it would be 60 divided by the size of my capacitor. Just a really quick rundown. Uh, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.